Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for a hot topic, and this talks about Atiku announcing that he will keep contesting for presidency. During an interview on the House of Service of the Voice of America in Abuja, Atiku Abubakar has vowed to keep contesting as long as he's alive and healthy. The 77-year-old was the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate during the 2019-2023 presidential elections and will be 81 by the next presidential elections in 2027. Even the former U.S. President Abraham Lincoln contested seven times before finally winning, he said. He has, however, vowed for support um, from his party above his personal ambitions. So he has said um, support for his party goes above his personal ambition, stating that he has said and repeatedly um, before the 2023 general elections that if the PDP decides to zone the presidential ticket to the south or southeast specifically, he won't contest it. As long as it's the decision of the party, he will abide by it. He has also shown support for a collaborative approach and willingness to merge with other parties to achieve a common goal. Now joining us to have a conversation is Comrade Mark Adebayo. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. And good morning, Via. Good morning to you. All right, so we're talking about um, the presidential candidate for the People's um, Democratic Party uh, Atiku, who was a former vice president of Nigeria um, during, um, you know, per President um, uh, Good Luck Jonathan's time. Um, and then we're seeing him come here now saying, I will keep, um, you know, contesting as long as I'm alive, as long as I'm healthy, regardless of my age, I will keep contesting for presidency. What do you think about this comment, you know, saying he's not backing down? regardless of you know wherever he is he would only back down if the pdp decides to zone um you know the presidential tickets at that point well uh first uh, first and foremost it is his, it is within his constitutional rights to aspire to be president of nigeria for as many times as he uh he wishes like he said if he's still alive and healthy that will keep contesting um uh, there's no age limit as to when you can contest. Uh, there's only uh, age recommendation as to uh, if you are younger below a certain age, I think 35, you cannot contest for the office of the of the president. So, uh, but even if you are one right, if you are mid-two seller, you can continue contesting. So that is within his constitutional right to say so. I mean, to, to continue contesting. Since, uh, but um, the. Uh, about his age, even he's, he's 77 years old, he's about he's, uh, the same age with uh, Donald Trump, he's, running in, uh, in, uh, he's also running for president in America, a former president of the U.S. Uh, the current president of the U.S. is 81, Joe Biden is 81 years old. So, if uh, that's nothing bad about that, because he's within his constitutional rights to continue running and continue running, maybe fate might smile on him uh, one, one day. Um, but... Um, what, what is relevant here? The question that is relevant is that uh, to what extent is his interest, ambition in running for the presidency of Nigeria, to what extent is it about the interest of Nigeria, about the good of Nigeria, about the progress of Nigeria, about the development of Nigeria? That is, that, that, that is the, the, the germane question that we should ask him. If it's, if it's, if it's about Nigeria, it's about his patriotic engagement with the success, progress, uh, of Nigeria, that is commendable. But if it's strictly about personal ambition, well, uh, that's nothing commendable there. That's not relevant to us as Nigerians there. Because what we need now is a leader who can connect with the people, who can connect with the challenges that people are facing, who can connect with the uh, with the masses, and um, and bring up policies that are humane and bring up policies that have the milk of human kindness not the kind of atrocious economic policies that we are undergoing under the Tinubu regime so we need a leader i don't care where he comes from i don't care his age grade i don't care this i, I care about his capacity i care about his patriotism I, I care about his commitment to the progress and peace of nigeria and the security of nigeria and uh, the welfare of nigerians all these 
are missing at the moment. So whoever can give us those, whoever can bring those to the table as president of Nigeria, no matter whatever his age, his level, let him come on board and let all Nigerians support such a person. Mm. So people are going to look at his pedigrees. They are going to look at what he did as vice president under Obasanjo. They are going to look about look at his life. They are going to look at his businesses. They are going to look. and then all this will form the gamut of the opinion that people are going to form about him becoming a just president. You know, don't forget this man has been running for presidency since. Um, uh, around 19, not even 1993, he has been running, uh, yeah, I think around 1990, he has been running, he has been trying to, to, to pick the ticket, presidential ticket of political parties, eventually he succeeded around 1987 or so, uh, getting ticket of uh, the then Action Congress, so, uh, but he still failed, so, if, uh, if he decide to continue running, I mean, it is within his constitutional right to do so. What is important is for, for us is that what is important for Nigerians is whether his ambition will, uh, you know, find a meeting point with the interest of Nigerians to live happily, to live peacefully, to, you know, to enjoy life uh, under a government that is humane to them. That is the most important thing now. It doesn't matter where anybody comes from now. In, deep, in this part of, of the country, for as long as you're Nigerian, it doesn't matter your age. For as long as you have the interest of Nigerians at heart, yes, why not? Why not? Mm. Okay, so um, to be clear, former um, Vice President Atiku Abubakar served with um, former President Olusegun Obasanjo, and he served from you know till 2007. Now, when he's going to be running again, um, that will be 2027. That is two decades. And, you know, people will tell you that the Nigeria of before is not the Nigeria of now. In fact, there are certain yeah. peculiarities. Things have changed. Um, so I'm wondering what he's going to be bringing to the table at this point. What are some things that we can, you know, expect from him, especially for the fact that he's been out of governance for two decades. I know that the current president obviously was a governor at that time as well when um, the, the former vice president was the, when article was a former vice president at that point but with the nigeria of today right and if we take aside maybe his personal ambition because i think some people always have that thing to say i i tried at something and i succeeded it might not just be oh you know what i want to just do this for the, the the fun of it it would just be yes i i succeeded even though i failed so many times and he he was referencing abraham lincoln who tried about seven times so with this um, it would take aside his personal ambition do you think he would definitely do a good job becoming nigeria's president in 2027 if he's been elected uh, well after the catastrophic leadership of uh, someone like uh, Jonathan and uh, Ambuari, I have decided that nobody, even an Indian comes from heaven, I'm not going to fight for anybody that we do so, we do this, we do the perform magic when in, when in power. When they get there, we see what they can do. You cannot fight for people in advance because most of the people we fight for, that we thought we were going to do well because of their experiences, because of their education, because of their exposure, they, they, they got to the place and then well, they, they messed up everything. And that is what is happening now. So, no, no, I, I won't be able to fight for him or anybody that when they get there, uh, they will do this, they will do that. No, 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 no. I mean, we have done that in the past and we've, we've seen where it, uh, it, uh, it led us. Uh, let me make a correction. Abraham Lincoln did not run for presidency for seven or nine times. That's a wrong, uh, that's wrong way to put it. He ran for several offices, several times. He ran for House of Reps, he failed. He ran for, for Senate, he failed. He tried to become VP, he, he failed. The first time he ran for president, he won the presidency. So after failing in business, failing in relationship, failing in marriage, failing in uh, going to the House of Reps, failing going to Senate, failing becoming VP, he ran in our raffle. So he failed at several at different levels of political engagement. Yeah. Not necessarily that he ran for president yeah, or we nine know times. That. So I need to I need to clear that. So, but it's an encouragement. It's an encouragement to anybody. It's, it's an encouragement about resilience, about continuity, about perseverance, which is okay. But the most important thing is that. Um, whether we do well or not, I, I, like, I, like I said, I will not be able to speculate about that. Uh, it, 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 it is he who knows why he says he wants to run for president. I, I, beyond ego. When the, when the current president was, uh, was even not yet uh, the candidate of his party last year, he said uh, becoming president has been a lifetime ambition. 
Mm. As being a lifetime ambition. How that ambition will now correlate with the ambition of Nigerians and Nigeria to become great people, to become, you know, people who are proud of their country, to be secure in their country, to have jobs, to have good education, to have access to good health and the rest of that. That is left to be seen. So it is important. It's not about the uh, politician's ambition. It's about the, 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 the general ambition of Nigerians to live in a country that protects them, to live in a country that they can feed well, to live in a country that is making progress. So, some 30 odd years ago, some leaders in the UAE, you know, United Arab Emirates, who are also are blessed with the oil that we are also blessed with in abundance, decided that, look, we are going to use the wealth of our country for our people and for our country. And they turned the desert into an Eldorado. I've been there. Go, go, go and see the magic that good leadership can, 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 can make. Go and see the progress that good leadership can bring. Go and see the advancement and the incredible and incredulous advances that good committed patriotic leadership can bring to bear on the people and, and the country. That is what is happening in, in, in UAE. A country like Turkey, we are in the same league, international league with a country like Turkey, but go there now, you will not see the difference between Turkey and any European uh, capital. So, um, here, we, 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 we have not been blessed to have a leader who has the vision mm. and the intention and the political will to turn Nigeria, to use the resources of Nigeria for the benefit and progress and advancement of Nigeria. No. What we have been seeing over time is that Nigeria is, you know, some of us who are born in the 60s, who are able to see some little bit of the golden era of Nigeria, can see how we are depreciated. Even the school I went to, I, I knew what it was before we got in. I know what it was before we left over 30 years ago. I know what it is now. So our institutions are depreciating. Yeah. Our governance system is progressing. Our educational system is progressing. Our look at all you need to do for you to, to gauge Nigeria's level of development, just look at our roads. Just look at our roads. Look at the state of electricity. You know, in a, even in this federal capital territory, Abuja, uh, has the probably the worst uh, power supply system in the country today. And also has the worst security. Just you know, two or three days ago, daylight around 10 a.m. The bandits walk into the mid, into the center of town, kidnap a heavily pregnant woman with her with her children and the brother-in-law, and took them away. Later, they released the the poor woman. Hmm. Is her children, her brother-in-law, are still with the bandits? They are demanding for six hundred million or something about now. Right in the middle of town, where the president resides, where the national security advisor resides, where the chief of army staff resides, where the IGP resides, where the DSS director, the headquarters of all the. Uh, national and international security agencies of Nigeria are domiciled in this place. Yet, people every day, every day, five, ten people are being kidnapped in the city center of Abuja. All the all the suburbs of, Abu of Abuja are free reign for bandits. So, what are we talking about? So, these are the things that we need to fix about our country. These are the challenges we need to deal with about our country. So, whoever Promises are who wants to be Nigeria president should tell us what is going to do differently from these people. When uh, President Buhari came on board, I was one of you that said, oh, he may perform woefully in the economy, he may perform woefully in, in governance, he may perform woefully in other areas, but I am sure he would defeat insecurity, he would defeat Boko Haram, he would defeat terrorism. No! The thing got worse before he left. The thing got worse under a general. So, what are we having today? We are just having a little bit of skeletal successes here and there, and, and, and but here in Abuja, in Abuja uh, it's not safe for you to just uh, even to call Uber now becomes an issue. If you don't have, it's not everybody here who can have the privilege of having a car like uh, some of us. So people will have to use uh, public transport, and these uh, kidnappers and one chance operators are, are taking over everywhere in Abuja. They are taking over. They don't care whether it's day or night, you know. Somebody just got fell victim about I think on Monday was it Monday or Tuesday, you know a lady just closed from her office, went outside, hailed a cab, lo and behold, 
they entered the wrong camp. Only God saved her. They went and dropped, after wiping off her, her account and everything, threatening to, to cut her to pieces and go and sell her body parts. She was begging and the rest of that. They abandoned her at the one isolated place. Only God saved her. And at those 8, 8 p.m., not as if it was 9. Mm. So we have anybody that wants to aspire to become Nigeria's leader must tell us in concrete terms what he's going to do, not, to, not just to address. Mm. It's not to address our challenges. It's not to address, don't address them. Solve them. Mm. We will address insecurity. We will address bad economy. We will address. Don't address. Mm. Redress. Mm. What we want is to redress the situation. Don't come and say yeah, we address. We address what? We are not looking for somebody that is going to address our challenges. We need somebody who will redress. Somebody, a leader with revolutionary thinking, with a solid ideological basis of understanding of where uh, and what it will do to, to take Nigeria to where it should be. Nigeria, for goodness sake, is resourced, is blessed. Not only with natural resources, but with incredible human resources. We are respected all over the world. Our 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 children go out there, they, 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 they smash 100 years record, 1,000 year, a, a millennial record in academic excellence, either in London School of Economics or in Harvard or in Cambridge or anywhere. Nigerians are, they are bashing their records left, right and center. But here, the country itself, just like the Yoruba people we say, uh, you know, the white pap comes from a very black, very dark uh, poor. So the, our, our issue in this country, the total, the total amalgam of our problem can be put into one capsule and that is leadership failure. That's all. Mm. So if anybody is aspiring to become president at 80, at 90, at 100, or even at 40 or 30 something, that's not the issue. The issue is that what are you going to do differently? Okay, what so are talking you about... To, is it going to be from... Yeah. Talking about, you know, leadership, right, and, you know, having the, the right kind of leader for a nation as such as this, how can we know, you know, a good leader? Because it's one thing for them to come in. Imagine, you know, campaign season. They come and they sell a lot of promises. They sell a lot of lofty ideas saying we will do this and we will do that. But how do we look at, the, at, at antecedents? How do we look at things and say this is a trajectory of things so far? This is a leader that we can trust. How do we know the makeup? You know of someone because guess what you've, you've spoken about you know former president Mohammed Buhari and his administration but people elected this president people elected him the other president former president good good luck Jonathan former president um, Olusegun Obasanjo former president Yaradwa current president Bola Metinubu there were people who support who supported this president who voted for them who elected them so I, I, I think saying, you know what, we need someone like this. How do we know someone like this so that we're not in the same? Because I heard you, you know, just speak, talking about retrogression, how, you know, everything is depleting. How do we vote for someone who would take Nigeria forward? And how can we even, even see the person? How can we know that this is that person? Uh, well, this is, uh, I think this is one very difficult question because, like I said earlier, I am tired of uh, fashion for anybody. That really no, it, obviously, this is not a flagship. So, it's it's wow. it's character I, I, and I, I, value. I'm trying to I'm trying to get now character and value of a president that we know would help you know the situation of Nigerians. We 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 just have to. I, I think one 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 option for us for now is to discard this all these old cargoes. I mean, when I, I'm not talking about age, all yeah. the people that have been players in the political arena of Nigeria for the past. How many years has it since uh, we, 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 we regained our civilian uh, rule? Well, I, I think uh, some players have, have, have been around for too long. They have been around for too long. I think we need to we need to change our trajectory in terms of elections and who and the personalities that we and trust with our, our commonwealth. I, I, I believe, uh, I think we should look in the other direction. Unfortunately, the people that are able, that will probably be able to make the difference in this country, either do not have the resources or do not have the intention or do not have uh, the courage, mm. the courage to put their heart in the ring. So that is what, you know, I have seen people who have succeeded in the corporate world, who have succeeded in their businesses, who have succeeded, succeeded in the outside world, who, people who are principled, people you know are decent, people you know have capacity, people you know, have, but they lack passion for politics. They don't want to have anything to do with it. They consider 
uh, politics as if it's, uh, it's like a leprosy that they don't want to move close to. So, and for that, uh, all of us, will, for as long as people like that are running away from their political responsibilities of, of partaking in the rescue mission of this country, for, for so long we will not be able to have somebody of the Stalin quality, of Stalin quality that we can say, look, this one we do, we do better. That is why some of us are beginning to believe that, okay, out of all, all the whole, all this uh, list of uh, people who say they want to run, rule Nigeria, maybe we should just, for once, it's not as if it's perfect, it's not as if it's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, I don't know, but, but like, maybe we should just give Peter Obi a chance to see what he can do for four years. If he messes up, even if he also messes up, then we throw him out in the, the, the following election. Mm. That's it. But for now, the only person that holds out a glint of hope, a glint of confidence, is Peter Obi. You understand? So, uh, we, we, we've seen what from Abba Sojo to date, we've seen all of them, what all of them all of they can do. There is no magic that the current president will do. Nobody should expect any magic. Nobody should expect any better economy or better governance. No! We, they, they will continue trading in fossils and uh, all manner, until uh, four years. It is now left to Nigerians. The kind of determination that people showed in 2023 that we have the highest number of registered voters in this land, that the younger democracy demographic of uh, uh, electorate came into the free and they, they almost achieved a political revolution it should be built upon in 2027 to ensure that we don't we do not continue in in this trajectory of tragedy of economic tragedy of security tragedy of social tragedy of tragic leadership uh you know uh, encounters that we have been having we must ensure that it's our responsibilities, our civic responsibilities, our constitutional responsibility to ensure, like you said, to look. In fact, in fact we should start looking. We should start looking for, searching for more people. Maybe it's time for us to be compelling people that we believe can do better for us to compel them by social action. And look, you need to contest for the presidency of the country. We will stand by you, we support you, and then you are going to win, and then you make a difference so that we can begin. We can start demanding responsibility from our leader. This mm -hmm. is where. Even under this uh, atrocious economic situation that we are, Nigerians should learn to demand for accountability from their leaders. We must begin to question their actions. We must begin to ask critical questions. Here now, I, I sent my driver to, to go and buy for yesterday 1,100 And we say we have a government that says renewed hope. Renewed hope has become furnished hope. It has become frustrated hope. Mm -hmm. It has become dark hope. So that is reality. We don't, we don't need to speak uh, uh, in double tongues. We just need. We, need, we, don't, we just need to. We, we, should, we don't need to speak tongue in cheek. This is this is our reality. This is the situation. President Bola Abedi who promised us a new hope. He promised that it was going to be different. He promised that he was going to run the country in a way that Nigerians will enjoy. Now that's why I me. Mean, I don't believe in that. This uh, we have removed stop uh, stop CDO. You are passing through pay now. You enjoy it. I run you. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> Shagari said uh, uh, austerity measure will uh, uh, will bring better life to Nigerians until it was removed. Mm. Uh, austerity measure didn't bring anything. Abangida came and said he came, he came with a social adjustment program. That sir. No, that's where I was shot here. I was shot. Here. I was a student in 1980, in, uh, in, uh, in 1989. That I was shot uh, uh, on Disney. You know, when we were protesting again during the anti anti uh, protest, I was shot here. You know, mm. uh, this one, this, the bullet wound of, of June 12. So some of us have been in the field. We have been in the barricade for, for since our student union days. You know, mm. so we know that it's a lie. Sap didn't bring us anything. It sap away our energy, sap away our joy, sap away our happiness, sap away our glory as a country. So it's a lie. When they say, oh, uh, they when they remove subsidy, it is paid to the enjoyment tomorrow. It's a lie. We, we, we should not buy it. They've removed the thing. What they remove is our joy. They've removed our relief. It's going to be paid and paid and paid. Let President Inubu say from today, Palita of where will be. Uh, let him even say it's 300 naira. We don't, we don't, there's no need to go back to 160 something. Let's say 300 naira. You will see how the bread, the prices of, of, of rice, of bread, of beans, of yam, cost of transmission will, will, will crash. Hmm. But when you have a country where you feed the greed of the ruling clique, 
what you what you get is retrogression. What you yeah. get is insecurity. What you get is poverty. What you get is hunger. I only pray, and I'm praying to God every day that one day, like Anifa Emi said, one day Nigerians will be so hungry that they will get so angry that they will make the necessary revolution that will bring us the good leadership that we want. But of All course, right. we don't need to to go into that mm -hmm. through our electoral processes, through our yeah. elections. We can get the, the kind of leader that we want, mm -hmm. the, the one that will give us progress and success and development and advancement as a nation. And the media, if you look, uh, the media that is the fourth estate of the realm is the only successful organ of governance in this country, because you guys have been consistent in projecting what is what is a social reality, reality of Nigeria. You have been consistent in being in the barricade with the people that believe in the. In, the, in this country, you have been the ones exposing bad governance. You have been the one, you know, setting the agenda for how this country can be fixed. So the media, kudos to you, kudos to you. And that this is your station. Thank you. I keep saying it. I know that you guys are going places because the way you bring socially relevant issues to discuss. I mean, this guy is just your beginning because I Thank know and I know one day this plus TV Africa we will celebrate you guys. You'll be celebrated all over Africa. You'll be celebra uh, celebrated globally. Because mm -hmm. you are connecting with the masses. You are connecting with the people. Slow mm -hmm. and steady. Keep growing and, and keep growing up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those very nice compliments. Um, I mean, it's well appreciated. All right. So something else that, um, you know, he spoke about, that is um, Atiku Abubakar, something else he touched on was showing support for collaborative approach. And, you know, he was talking about his willingness to merge with other parties as well to achieve a common goal. And then, you know, there was obviously the, 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 the saying or you know, something that was just going around that, oh, Atiku and Obi might just, you know, collaborate together, have a merger um, to have, you know, a strong opposition party. Now, do you think that is a good approach? Because, I mean, I know that both of them, you know, they tried to run for presidency in this last general election. And so both of them coming together, do you think that would just be a good um, a strong force, you know, in, in the political sphere, and then you, you don't know. So that way, um, the APC, who is the current ruling party, will have, you know, their toes um, being pushed around and saying we have to do better because there is a stronger opposition party. So do you think this is something to welcome um, the, the willingness to actually merge with other parties as well? Well, that would be a welcome development if former Vice President Atiku will say, okay, uh, I will suspend my ambition and support Peter Obi. And the PDP and Labour Party can come together in a collaborative uh, coalition to be able to bring Obi on board. But if it's that for Obi to play second field to become VP to Atiku, overnight Obi will lose all his supporters. He will lose minimum of 80 to 90 percent of the supporters. Because uh, they do not, many of his supporters will not see the uh, the the common ground between quote unquote light and darkness. So the uh, but if if uh, uh, Abu Bakr will say okay, uh, I, I I am collaborating with Obi to support mm. him to become president. I'm suspending my ambition and rest of that. It will be great for all of us. You imagine Peter will be becoming the candidate, president candidate of both PDP and Labour Party and all that, all all other parties coming on board. You know, but maybe five or ten of we, we did it under CUPP. I'm, I'm the current spokesperson for CUPP, Coalition of United Political Parties. We have supported uh, Ajiku in 2019. Uh, unfortunately, that election was rigged. So, uh, if there's that kind of collaborative uh, agenda between Atiku and Obi, by which Atiku will say, okay, I will support you, Obi, to become Nigeria's president. Oh, my goodness. That will be the day. That will, that will give us. At least let us see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Let us see what he has been talking, talking, talking. Let us see. He, 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 he speaks differently from the others. He acts differently from them. Let's see whether we govern differently from them. Let's even try that. Let's, let, even if it's going to be trial and error, let's give, give him the opportunity of four years. If he messes up, we throw him out in the next election. That's all. That's all. But for now, that's the only person that gives us the kind of hope that we, we, we are looking for. For now, that is the person that, that is talking to all to our needs. For now, that is the person that is addressing the challenges the way should be, they should be addressed. So, if that is the case, if that is the only thing that we can get from him, people say, talk is simple, let's, let's give him the job. Let's see what he can do in, in four years. Let's get, I mean, so, we can always I think try different we do well people. for this country. 
Yeah. Article will do well for this country if he decides to support Peter Obi for 2027. Oh but, my goodness. It will be great. Some of us will work. But how about his own ambition? If it's been his ambition to become Nigeria's president and he's tried for, you know, he's tried several times, how about his own ambition? Um, so are you saying that he needs to shelve his ambition to support someone else? He, he can do it if he loves this country very much. If he loves this country very well, the way he says. If he loves this country, I want to believe that Tikwabaka loves Nigeria. I want to believe that uh, it means well for the country. If he does so, uh, he will see that this is the time to support someone like Peter Obi, who has connected with both the old and the new generation of Nigerians. So he should just... Uh, he, 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 he will All go right. down in his, 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 his name will be written in gold. All right. In his, in, in yeah. I think whatever he decides to do, I'm saying he would keep, because the major thing he was reiterating here is that he's going to keep contesting um, no matter what age. And um, as long as he's healthy, he's alive, he's definitely going to keep contesting. Although he might just look for ways to collaborate with other parties as well. Anyways, whatever. Yeah. Peter, would you just not make mis the mistake of uh, becoming the running mate to Alaji Atiku Abubaka? If he I'm does sure, that, I'm sure, I'm sure they would decide on, on, on what to do. Anyways, I want to say thank you for coming. Um, it was so great to have any conversation with you on this. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Nigeria shall be great one day. Shall Amen. be great and to be in our lifetime. I love this country. And I know you love this country. All of us, we are going to be this country together. Amen. You are young, you are youth, you also join the join the join the trade <laughs> the part of the process of course you are doing your own beat as a journalist but also yeah. all of us i love this country we love this country this country shall be great we shall rescue this country from the perini guy frank cons who are putting us backwards one day very soon nigeria we engage the front moving gear thank you so much for amen. having me amen amen to that thank you so much thank you all right, we're sticking with Comrade Mark Adebayo. He's a public affairs analyst. And we've just been talking about the fact that, um, you know, Atiku Abubakar has said he's going to keep contesting um, regardless as long as he's alive, he's healthy, he will keep contesting. But another thing he also said was um, he's looking for collaborative, collaborative approach. He's looking for mergers and he might just collaborate with other parties as well. This is where we have to draw the curtain here on the show today. It's been lovely having a breakfast with you as always. My name is Romet Paulson. I'll see you again on Monday. Have an amazing weekend.